Hello there everybody, my name is Waddles and welcome to part 2 of the Conduit Quest. Even though part 1 wasn't called part 1, this is part 2, I think. <laughs> okay, a little too close and a little too wordy, I get it. Today, I'm asking myself, how hard is it to get the Nautilus shell? If you saw my video the other day, I asked, how hard is it to get to the heart of the sea? Now, of course, these are both ingredients in the wonderful Conduit Beacon that is being added in this update. Now, of course, uh, we need eight Nautilus shells today uh, because you need eight for the recipe. This is the recipe. So I want to test and find out exactly how hard it is to get eight of these shells, of course, in a survival type setting. Not in creative mode. I can go into the inventory and grab them, which isn't hard at all. This next sentence is about to impress you a lot. I went ahead before this video and prepared this time for the experiment. I went and did some research and the Nautilus shell can be obtained from a drowned or from fishing. With this being known, however, this video is going to focus on the drowned and how easy it is to get from the drowned. I could, of course, do the fishing as well, but I'm thinking drowned for this video because that's how I'm feeling. So my method, what am I going to do? Well, I have two diamond swords here. I have a sharpness five one and then I have a sharpness five looting three one. I'm going to kill a drowned, well spawn a drowned, and then kill the drowned and see if it drops the shell. I'm going to keep track of how many drowned it takes to get one shell. Then I'm going to do the math and kind of multiply. Now, of course, this is going to be a rough estimation because spawns are completely random. But I'm trying to figure out how long it takes for me to get a single shell and then we'll estimate. Ah, there we go. Okay, so 18 zombies is what it took. So with those numbers, 18 times 8, 8 is the number of shells we need total, is 144. That means that at that rate, I would need to find 144 drowned and kill them to have all 8 shells. Now, of course, there is some variance that we'll get to in a minute, but I'm going to do the same thing with the looting sword now. Okay, so that time it took me seven. That's a whole lot less. Seven times eight is 56. I would have to find 56 drowned and kill them. However, the looting doesn't really become a variable here. All looting is doing is giving me a higher chance of that zombie dropping the shell. From my experiments, however, it seems like a drowned with a shell always drops it. Of course, though, that may not always be the case. That could just be kind of a coincidence that I have been finding while testing this whole video and this whole concept. The drowned spawn with the shell kind of like equipment. It'll be in their hand. So with all of that being known, it's time to talk about the variables of this whole experiment and really what this experiment means. So wait for it. Brace yourself. This experiment really means nothing at all. <laughs> it can be a, a variable. <laughs> so what I mean is that drowned could spawn. You could get really lucky and find eight drowned in a row that have a shell and spawned like that. Or you could get really unlucky and find a thousand drowned in a row with no shell. My numbers aren't really a good example of what is always going to be the case with the drowned. Sometimes you're just going to get lucky and sometimes you're just going to get unlucky. So really, these numbers don't mean much. And the whole looting versus no looting doesn't necessarily seem to mean much either at all. You could get super lucky or you could get super unlucky. And I mean, while we're at it with variables and that kind of stuff, I am in Java Edition. Drop rates are different from Java to Bedrock Edition. Basically, my point here is that the shell is going to be a whole lot harder to get than the heart of the sea. And that's something I didn't really necessarily think about until you guys were pointing it out in the comments and I started testing it out. The heart of the sea may be somewhat easy to find, but the shell doesn't seem to be very easy to find at all. It's pretty rare. Now, again, another thing to take into consideration is that if you're in survival, you're not spawning drowned in a chamber. You have to find them in the wild, which makes this a whole lot harder. You're going to have to set up some kind of farming area for the drowned or something like that because you're not going to find this many drowned spawning here right in front of you. 
<laughs> Unless you're cheating, of course. Now again, this video didn't really take into account the whole treasure fishing thing, but I doubt that's going to be very, very easy because AFK fishing may have been broken in this new update. Or at least I can't seem to alt tab out of a window and use a fish farm, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But basically, to sum up this experiment, how hard is the Nautilus shell to get, or eight of them? Pretty difficult. That's going to be the thing that's going to hold you up on this new update. If you haven't seen part one of this video, go check that out. That is a pretty fun and interesting video. In that video, which took place in this very same world, I set a goal to find three Heart of the Seas. Did I do it? I don't know. I guess we'll have to check it out to find out for yourself. I hope you're ready to hunt a whole lot of drowned or fish a whole lot because this shell doesn't seem like it's going to be very easy to find and I honestly kind of like it like that. My name is Waddles, I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, leave a like if you haven't done that yet either, and then go have a good day. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time. Goodbye everybody.